Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Sarah, this is Micah, and we're the lead pastors at the Vine Church in Kennewick, Washington. Yeah, good morning, good to see you this morning. So have you ever found yourself just caught up in a task or an experience, like totally devoted, all of our free time is going to this, and it's mm -hmm. exciting, or maybe it brings new challenge in life. We had that experience a number of years ago, uh, quite a few years ago, we were um, given a free boat. It was we, free, guys. We took it. It was free. We were gifted a <laughs> boat. And as you can imagine, a free boat comes with a lot of baggage. Uh, this one in particular had been sitting uh, out in a field for years. Uh, the tarp had um, gone to disrepair, and so it had been soaked by mm -hmm. rain and snow and dirt for years. And uh, so there was a lot to do. There was a lot to learn. We learned how to uh, rebuild fiberglass in the in the base of the boat. We learned how to carpet. Uh, we did a custom upholstery in there. Sarah did all the awesome. sewing, and we mm -hmm. installed custom upholstery. And then we um, and, and then we worked on just all the odds and ends and the waxing of the boat and all that. But it was this all encompassing task. Uh, nearly all of our free time was devoted mm -hmm. to working on this, engaged in this. Our thoughts, even when we weren't working on the boat, were about the things that came next. And today, as we continue next, we're going to talk about uh, one of the things that the early century, the first century church was devoted to, dedicated to. Absolutely. We've looked at the church and what were the distinctives of the church. And in Acts 2, there's this brief summary. And one of the things that it lists there was that the church was devoted to prayer. And that's what we're going to look at today. What did that look like for the church to be devoted to prayer? Yeah, so uh, as we pick up from where we were last week, last week we were talking about Peter and John, and they had healed a man who uh, had been crippled since birth uh, outside the temple gates. He was there begging. And so they healed him, and this man walking for the first time in his life uh, rushes into the temple, and he's leaping and celebrating, and he's drawing a crowd. People are looking in wonderment. What is happening in this moment? They witnessed a miracle. And of course, the authorities, feeling threatened uh, by the power that they had witnessed and the excitement of the crowds, uh, they arrest Peter and John. Uh, for what Peter and John will describe at trial as an act of kindness. Have we been arrest arrested for an act of kindness? Uh, and in time, Peter and John were released uh, with a strict warning. Don't continue to talk about this Jesus guy any longer. Of course, they had a different agenda. And so as we pick up the story today in uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 23... Uh, Peter and John are going to return to the church members, to the church, to the followers of Jesus, and watch their response in this moment. So here's how the story continues. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain and the kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord, against his anointed one? Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So having experienced two things, first of all, a miracle. They're witnessing the power of the Holy Spirit and God at work amongst them. And secondly, having begun to experience what would become major opposition and persecution in the church, they come back together. And I love this moment. I love this mm. description. Uh, what do they do in this moment? Together with one voice, they lift up 
their voices in, in prayer, right? Mm. They, they turn to God. And I think it's a beautiful moment, opportunity, and reminder to us in the church. Uh, this is something we are invited to do together, to, to pray, to lift our voice as one to God. And there's, some, uh, uh, there's incredible beauty found in this idea of seeking God's will, calling out to God um, in community, together, talking with God. So what did they pray? They, there's three distinctive parts to their prayer. And I want to look at the first one. So in verse 24, they started off by saying, Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. So they started off by acknowledging God, acknowledging who he was. He, he is the sovereign creator. And so they recognize God as a sovereign creator, and then they recognize themselves as part of creation. And so they began this prayer with this posture of humility, this posture of lifting up God and honoring and praising him. Yeah, so having acknowledged God and his place and their place in relation to God, uh, they then ter turn their attention to the challenge at hand. And they quote uh, one of the Psalms of David as um, they say, the kings of earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord. And they go on to apply it to the circumstances they're facing right now. They identify that the Romans, the Gentiles, and the Jewish people have conspired against you, God. And now we are experiencing uh, the fallout of what is happening in this moment. So they turn their attention to the challenges that they're facing. And as we were studying and talking about this passage this week, we were reflecting on the fact that we too today, 2,000 years later in the church, are facing some of these same sorts of challenges, challenges mm -hmm. of just opposition against God's good work in this world, that, that evil and, and that uh, dark forces and selfish willfulness of humanity is encroaching upon what God is trying to do in this world. And so we as a church, like they as a church in the first century, get to pray to God, acknowledging the challenges we facing, we're facing, but knowing that God is bigger, stronger than those challenges. So they acknowledged who God was, they acknowledged the challenges, and then they made their requests to God. And there are two specific requests in here. In verse 29, um, they say, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word boldly with great boldness. So they, their first request is enable us to speak in the face of this opposition, because this was a time of crisis and there was definitely potential for them to be afraid or to withdraw or, or to hide. And they recognized that and they said, God, enable us to speak your word, empower us. And, and again, we're in Acts. It's the story of how the Holy Spirit empowered the, the early church. So that was their first request. Then their second request in verse 30, they said, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders. And, and here they acknowledge that God is the one who heals, that God is the one who performs signs and wonders through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And they ask God, hey, help us do our part and then you do what only you can do. You do the miraculous stuff here. And I love their dependency on God in this, in this prayer and the simplicity of this prayer. Empower us and then you do what only you can do. And God's response is, is immediate. The place where they were meeting is shaken. They're filled with the Holy Spirit and they go out and they speak the word of God boldly. Yeah. So, well, we're in a series right now exploring the book of Acts and particularly at this point, what, what were the distinctive marks of the first century church? Uh, in this case, we're looking at the subject of prayer and we wanna zoom out just a little bit and talk about the broader perspective of prayer throughout scripture. So let's start with just a little bit of a working definition. Um, quite often prayer would be defined as talking to God. Okay, mm -hmm. and, I th and that's very accurate and true in many respects, but it doesn't encompass the full conversation of what prayer is and can look like. Both the biblical narrative and our experience in life 
Prayer is more than just the words that we say to God. It also involves the posture in which we approach God. And we saw that in the prayer here in Acts as, as they go to God, first acknowledging him, his holiness and highness, and then eventually saying, God, do what only you can do, perform miracles in this moment. So prayer also involves not only our conversation, the things that we say, but also the posture with which we approach mm -hmm. God. Um, and also prayer involves um, uh, often or should involve our quietness, our posture of listening for God. The, think of prayer as a communication with uh, a God. Think of God as a relational God who desires mm -hmm. to be near and in relationship with us, in which case communication is going to be vital. vital. And that has to be a two-way road, that we talk with God, but we also come in a posture mm -hmm. of listening and receiving in that moment. And anytime I'm looking at kind of a Christian principle, a broader idea, um, the first place I like to look is in the life of Jesus. And prayer was central in Jesus' mm -hmm. life. Uh, many, many times throughout the gospel accounts, we read about Jesus and prayer. Just to mention a few in Luke 5, uh, we're told he often withdrew to lonely places to pray. In Luke 6, he he took that time away and he prayed all night long. In Mark 1, uh, it mentions him getting up early in the morning to take time in prayer. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew that in his relationship with God, prayer, that two-way communication, that time spent together was pivotal. Absolutely. And he also taught on prayer as Many of you may have heard the Lord's Prayer on the, in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6. Um, Jesus speaks to prayer and he, he speaks to the simplicity of prayer. He says, don't babble on trying to use big words or fancy words or a lot of words. Just speak simply to God. And he gives his disciples an example of a prayer. And many of you probably have heard this prayer and in, in maybe in different versions, but our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven, Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is such a, a simple and beautiful prayer. One of the lines that has really just spoken to me in recent years that has come back and over and over in my, in my prayer time is the, the line, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I think that's, that encompasses so much of what this posture of prayer is is to be mm -hmm. this a prayer of surrender where, where we pray God your kingdom come and knowing that that kingdom is about hope and healing and love and goodness that's the kingdom that we're praying would come and we pray that your will be done not our will but your will be done again surrendering our will so that we get to be a part of this kingdom and the whole asking the Holy Spirit to empower us to participate in this kingdom and what it looks like and in bringing about this kingdom as God so often uses his people to bring about his healing and his good work in this world. Yeah. So um, Jesus' prayer here is beautiful. And sometimes we pray it word for word Which together. Is, yeah. And that's a beautiful thing to do. Um, but in addition to um, the the use of it in a prescri prescriptive manner, in, in using it in his exact words, there's also a beautiful pattern mm -hmm. uh, to be recognized in the, the ways that he prays, the subjects that he goes to, the way that he orders it. Uh, he begins by saying, God, you mm -hmm. are holy, placing God in his place, recognizing God in the place that he exists. Um, and he said, and then he goes on, as Sarah mentioned, your will be done in this world, your kingdom come and your will be done. He presents his simple request, mm -hmm. our daily bread, give us those simple things that we need to survive. And then he says, God, forgive us and lead us into a new way of life. I love the flow mm -hmm. of the way Jesus taught his disciples to pray start with God, move on um, uh, to his kingdom and his will being done and healing in this world, uh, make our simple requests, ask for our forgiveness, and then invite God to lead us 
into new ways. The Apostle Paul also wrote on prayer in many of his letters. And I wanted to read one specifically in Ephesians 1 verse 18. He writes, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So pray in the Spirit, knowing that the Holy Spirit is with us, is present and communicating. And then pray on all occasions. So whatever is going on in your life, all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. So there's not just one way to pray or one type of prayer. All occasions, all types of prayers and requests. There's another passage in, in 1 Thessalonians where uh, Paul writes, pray continuously. Just continually pray. This life of prayer is what he's describing yeah in philippians paul writes to the church uh there at, at philippi philippians chapter 4 he says don't be anxious um mm -hmm. but in every situation pray with thanksgiving uh rejoice in the lord again i'll say it rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all the lord is near don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, um, with prayer and petition, bring your petitions mm -hmm. to God with thanksgiving. Present those requests to Him. And I love the way he finishes it. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. He says, uh, don't be anxious. So he's referring to times in life when all signs point to there are problems and challenges. He says, instead, with thanksgiving, that's an interesting pros posture to approach God mm -hmm. in, in difficult mm -hmm. and tumultuous times. He says, with thanksgiving, present those requests to God and know that God, who transcends everything we can understand in this moment, in this situation, will guard our hearts and minds and give us peace. Mm, that's beautiful. You know, as we as we talk about prayer together, I wonder if some of us feel a bit intimidated by this idea of prayer or feel like it's kind of a daunting thing. I mean, have you ever felt like prayer it was challenging, where it was hard to pray, or, or have you ever felt inadequate in your prayers or just not motivated to pray? Or, or maybe you've wondered, is God really hearing me? Is is God really listening or how should I pray? You know, sometimes prayer can be challenging, but God is with us in our prayers. That this is one of the beautiful things about prayer. In Romans 8 and verse 26, it says, "We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans." And I love that so the Spirit himself is interceding for us. So as we pray, we're not alone. As we pray, the Spirit prays with us. The Spirit prays for us. And it's just this really comforting thing um, that prayer doesn't need to be intimidating or daunting because the Spirit um, is praying with us. Yeah. So why would we overcome those challenges? Why mm -hmm. is prayer so important? Uh, why would we pray? Uh, there's two primary reasons that I'd challenge us with with today. Uh, first of all, prayer is powerful. Throughout mm -hmm. Scripture, we are told that God both hears and responds when we pray. Uh, but secondly, prayer is also transformational mm -hmm. in our lives. As we pray things like Jesus prayed, your will be done, we begin to release our own agenda and submit to God's. And as we pray, as we spend time in conversation and in nearness to God, we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we are transformed inwardly. Um, James, uh, he says in chapter 5, verse 13, he says, If anyone's sick, mm -hmm. they should pray. If anyone's happy, they should pray. He goes on to say, prayer is yeah. powerful. Prayer mm -hmm. is important and in any season of life, it is a valuable uh, experience to lean into. So how do we pray? And I think it's really important to, in, in this conversation to say that there are so many different ways to pray. Um, and sometimes we find ourselves kind of locked into one single way of, of praying. And I just, I just want to blow the doors open and say, hey, there's so many different ways 
that we can come to God in prayer. Sometimes it's through singing. It's, it's through praise and adoration, and we praise God by singing. Sometimes we, we pray and we speak to God like he's a close friend or a mentor. Sometimes that can be, you know, in a quiet room with a, a candle and very quiet and silent. And other times that can be in the car when we're stuck in traffic, but praying to God. Sometimes... Uh, like Micah mentioned, it's, it's all about listening. And so just sitting in silence in the presence of God, intentionally listening for God. Sometimes it's through scriptures. We can pray through scriptures. We can pray through the Psalms. Um, there are many people who've come before us and have written their prayers down. Going through books like the, the, the Book of Common Prayer, um, you could read a lot of liturgical prayers that are just beautiful and you can pray with people from generations ago who were devoted to prayer and devoted to Jesus. Another way um, that I like to pray uh, often is, is prayer in movement, through movement. So maybe it's a prayer walk, or maybe it's is that um, I'm doing something else, but, but being conscientious of my movement in prayer with God. You know, the focus of prayer is not so much the form, the focus of prayer is an intentional communion and communication with God. Like Micah was saying, that, that two-way conversation, being open with God, surrendering to God, and both talking and listening to God. So as we start to conclude today, uh, you remember that story in Acts chapter 4, the church with one voice lifted up their prayers to God. And so we want to challenge ourselves, invite us as a church or anyone who's listening today to pray with us about mm -hmm. a few different things. Let's lift up our voice together. And the subjects that came to mind for us were, first of all, the pandemic. Um, prayer mm -hmm. for healing in this world, uh, prayer for the millions of households that have experienced loss and are grieving mm -hmm. in this time, uh, prayer for, for healing and new opportunity in medicines, vaccines, and God's miraculous work mm -hmm. to take place uh, to eradicate this challenge that we face throughout the world. Secondly, um, as Jesus prayed, your kingdom come and your will be done in this world. And certainly in this challenging season for our nation, as we continue to struggle as a nation with racial and social justice, uh, we, we pray together for reform, for opportunity, for equity in our nation. And finally, as a church, uh, we're praying about next steps. We are so excited to be purchasing a facility and uh, to be soon able to gather again on Sunday mornings and throughout the week. Um, and, and we just pray together that God would guide this process, mm -hmm. lead us where he will, lead us in ways that he will into a new neighborhood, a new community, new opportunities, both to worship together and to serve a community well. So today we're, we're invited we have to prayer. We have this opportunity and this challenge uh, before us to be a people devoted to prayer, to be a community of prayer. And there's one final verse that I want to go to that's just this beautiful picture of what happens in prayer. It's in Psalm 116, verse 2. And the psalmist writes, writes Because the Lord turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. Because the Lord turned his ear to me. Another version says, Because the Lord bent down to hear me. And I get this picture of a parent with a child and the child's trying to say something and the parent is leaning over and speaking at eye level with this child, making sure that they hear each word. And this is God's posture in prayer. God wants to hear us. And so we're invited um, as individuals and as a community to, uh, to be devoted to prayer. And this is a rich and deep devotion of, of intentional relationship with God, intentional communication and communion with God. And so we want to ask you today, will you commit to setting aside some chunks of time this week, intentionally devoting those times to prayer? And it can look a whole lot of different ways, just like we said. Um, but I'm wondering, will you commit 
to devoting some time this week to prayer because God in his great love has turned his ear to us and he's waiting, he's wanting to hear from us. Well, speaking of prayer, let's pray. <laughs> God, thank you for this day, for this thank opportunity. You. Thank you for this opportunity, this avenue of conversation in prayer. And I pray that in the week, in the weeks to come, God, that you will invite us, remind us, call us into your presence as we communicate and as we listen. God, we thank you for Jesus and the hope that we found in him. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and all the many ways you have invited us to nearness and to relationship. And I pray today that we can find meaningful places of prayer. God, that we can raise our concerns and requests to you, that we can celebrate who you are and the good things that we see you doing in this world. God, invite us into your presence as we pray this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So each week we leave you with a song, and this week um, our song is The Lord's Prayer by Hillsong, and we chose an acoustic version of this song, and we just hope that this, um, this song is a prayer for you as you listen to this song, that you're able to just be still and to reflect on the words and to pray and to c communicate and commune with God, and so hopefully this song will will speak to you and, and help foster a time of prayer. Hey friends, we love you and thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us this morning. Have a blessed week. Bye everyone.